How many are happy to be in the house of the Lord? Amen. Bwana asifiwe. Bwana asifiwe. We serve a great and a mighty God. A God who is so faithful. A God who has seen us all this time. And we are obliged to say thank you because he's so faithful. Praise the Lord. We shall continue today with the teaching that we started last week on a godly and a healthy home. Last week was just the introduction. We want to proceed to part two which is entitled characteristic of a godly and a healthy home. We want to look at the characteristics of a godly and a healthy home which is part two of the topic godly and healthy home. For our visitor, welcome to Apostolic Fellowship Church, Fountain of Life Center. And my names are Pastor Abu Bakar Buluku Saif. I just want to welcome you and I want you to feel free. Praise the Lord. Just turn to your neighbor and say, I love Jesus. Tell them, I love Jesus. I am happy to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Today we shall just have one service. So I want to take the next 45 minutes to go through the topic, a godly and a healthy home. And we are looking at the, at the characteristics of a godly and a healthy home. For those of us who have a book and a pen, I will really appreciate if you get to write, to write down whatever we shall be talking today. It is something that is very important for you and also important for your children. As your children grow up, these are things that you'll try and instill in them. It's called the Christian tradition. So I want us to read the book of Ephesians one more time. Chapter 5, verses 21 to 23. We are simply continuing with our teaching. Ephesians is after Galatians and before Philippians. If you are there, kindly say Amen. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33. It really encourages to, to have Bibles. For those who don't have Bibles, you can get them from Keswick Bookshop, opposite City Hall, just behind City Hall. It's going for 350 shillings. It's on offer. So you can visit Keswick. If you are there, kindly say amen. amen. Ephesians 5, 21 to 33, the Bible says, Be subject to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives, be subject to your husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church. His body and is himself its savior. As the church is subject to Christ, so let wives also be subject in everything to their husbands. 25. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word, that he might present the church to himself in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. Even so husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no man ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This mystery is a profound one. And I'm saying that it refers to Christ and the church. However, let each one of you love his wife as himself. And let the wife see that she respects her husband. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. It is boring when you have... <laughs> A dull class. You need a class that is active. A class that shows you that they are moving with you. Buenas yeah. ifiwe. And I really admire Muslims at times. Whenever they meet, you will hear them say, Assalamu alaikum. But as Christians, it's hard for us to say, Buenas ifiwe. 
We feel like hey, it's a very big sentence. Sindio? <laughs> For you to tell your brother, Buana Sifiwe, how are you? How is your family? Huwa tunaanza tu na mambo mengine. Praise the Lord. So it it becomes hard for us even to respond to that statement in the house of God. And when the politician says, I will buy for you gorogoro mbili za maindi, we jump up. And yet when the Lord is being mentioned, when we are saying praise the Lord, somebody says, Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> When somebody says praise the Lord, you should jump up and say amen. Amen means naiwe ivo. Let it be so. If it is praising the Lord, let it be so. Buona sifiwe. So coming back to what we are talking today, we are simply visiting a home and we are looking at a marriage which is another level in life after somebody has finished high school and finished university, then gotten a job. The next move is, you get married. It is another phase of life that has got a lot of surprises. So, when you're looking at marriage, we looked at it last week, and we saw that a man and a woman have roles in a marriage. The woman should submit to the man. And we saw that submission does not mean subordination. It simply means to wholeheartedly respond to your husband's love. When, he, when your husband extends the love, you wholeheartedly respond to him by being good. Praise the Lord. By listening to him. And we also learn that the husband, the man should love the wife. The way Christ loved the church to a point that he was able even to sacrifice his life. He gave up his life simply because of his bride, which is the church. The same, same way the man should love his family, should love his house to a point that he should be able to provide for his family. When he goes to work and comes home in the evening, he has gotten a paycheck. After setting aside the other payments like tithe, loans, and etc., he should be able to bless his family with food. He should be able to bless his family by paying rent. He should be able to become a blessing to the wife by buying the wife something. And if the wife needs to go to the salon, the man should be able to dig into his pocket and say, you can have this much and go to the salon. If you have a daughter in the house, you can do the same. If you have a son in the house, you can take him to a barber shop. That is how you get to do or rather sacrifice for your family. You are simply saying no. I will not buy these things for now because there is a need. I need to pay school fees for my child. So this month, I will not dig into my pocket and buy a pair of shoes. Praise the Lord. You say that I think I will hold on to these ones. These ones can take me until next time. After next time, I'll buy a shoe. But for now, let me pay school fees. That is now a responsible man. Praise the Lord. So, when you look at a family, there is the head of the family. That is, it can be the Lord or it can be the devil. It depends on whom you chose before you got married. There is a foundation that we normally build before we get married. And the foundation is, if you are living for Christ, you build a godly foundation. If you have given your life to Christ, you are building a godly foundation. And hence... When a counselor has two people who want to get married, the first question that, that a counselor should ask is, are both of you born again? Because if both are not born again, this is just a disaster in the making. Because marriage is tough. Marriage is not easy. And so you need the Lord. You need him to be the foundation of your marriage so that you can know how to act. If your wife answers you badly, and if you are a born again child of God, you will not hit the wife because you have the fear of God in you. The way you respond to your wife, it determines if you are a child of God or not. And if your husband comes home, he is harsh, lashing out words. Instead of you answering back as a child of God, you will keep quiet. But how will you learn all these things if you are not in the house of God? So when a couple decides to live for Jesus, 
then they are blessed. Because when storms of life come in their marriage, they will be able to stand. And so among the characteristics of a goalie and a healthy home, we are looking at the first one. It is a home built on love. One of the characteristics of a godly and a healthy home is it is a home built on love, truth, and the perfect will of God. One of the signs that may tell you that this home is living for God is that it is a home built on love, truth, and the perfect will of God. Let us read Psalms chapter 115 verses 1. You can write there Psalms 115 verses 1. The Bible says in Psalms 115 verses 1, Not unto us, O Lord, not to us, but to thy name give glory for the sake of thy steadfast love and thy faithfulness. When you're living for Christ, it will not be all about you, but it will be all about Jesus. The way you treat your family, you will want to treat it as per the scriptures. The Bible says that a man who doesn't provide for his family is worse than a heathen. We have men once they have received their salary, they vanish. They get lost from the office and even their homes for three days, for one week. We have seen that. Maybe you have seen it in your own home or even in your neighborhood. There are men who are like that. And once they surface, somebody comes and knocks at your door. And tells you that your father akopale kwa mtaro. Enda muka mchukue. Or go and pick your husband. He has fallen into a ditch. Praise the Lord. And so when one has the fear of the Lord. One will have come across a verse that says God is love. That is First John chapter 4 verses 9. God is love. As much as you have passions in, in your heart. You have desires. You feel like I feel I should buy this thing. I feel I should get this thing. You will always remember your family. You will remember, but my family doesn't have this. But I've not paid electricity bill. But I've not paid water bill. Praise the Lord. You are simply extending the love of God in your heart towards your family. When there is a problem in your house, you will always go back to this manual, which is the manual, the word of God. And you will ask God, God, what will I do? This thing has come up. How will I handle it? My child has gotten to the age of adolescence. He has become rude. How will I handle my son? You'll come across verses like, Unless the Lord builds a house, those who build it labor in vain. Psalms 127 verses 1. And you'll go to your knees and realize that it is not all about beating, but it's all about prayer. And you'll be on your knees day and night praying for your son. You'll be on your knees day and night praying for your wife to change. There is a time way back in the year 2009 after I'd come back from my studies. My wife had so many friends and she wanted to join a certain group known as Jamibora. And I, and I reflected back at the stories that she used to give me every evening about her friends. And I told her, my wife, you don't have any friend. Trust God for new friends. The ones that you can get into that group. She didn't listen. I didn't argue with her. I didn't abuse her. I went to my knees and I told God, if these friends add value to my wife's life, let them hang around. If they don't add value, God, God just chased them away. After some time, they all vanished. None of them even calls her. I simply extended love in that issue. I dealt with it from an angle of love. Praise the Lord. We see that it is a home built on truth. When we are looking at truth, we are looking at loyalty. Nowadays, we have a problem of infidelity, especially with these gadgets, mobile phones. Eh? Some, have, some have put passwords. You realize that your husband comes home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And some calls, he has to receive them in the bathroom. Ama nimpakati atoki. Yes, yes, yes. It seems like network. Or at times, the woman that used to leave her phone down, saizi anatembea nayo. Buana sifiwe. These gadgets, emails. Eh? Another one is Facebook. I remember our bishop was sharing with us around March. And she told us of a couple in America. The wife used to browse the internet as in for long hours till late at night. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. Then one evening, when the husband was coming home, he met the wife at the doorstep, carrying the suitcases, leaving, because alikuwa amepata mchumba kwa Facebook. Bwana sifiwe. The husband didn't even notice that infidelity had crept into his house. By the time he was knowing it, 
the wife was marching out. That is a sign that that was, that was not a godly home. When a home is built on love, you'll be able to follow the manual. That is the word of God. You'll be able to pray together every evening before you sleep. You can share scripture and then you sleep. Go and ask if you will. To a point even your children will be accustomed to that. That before we sleep, we have to pray. Before we leave the house, we have to pray. Praise the Lord. Because the devil is moving around like a roaring lion looking for whom to devour. And if you're not a prayerful person, what you will realize, you'll be falling into temptations. I told you last week, what we see in our offices, there are women introducing your daughters to men. They tell your daughters, there is a man that I know very well. He is loaded. He has a car. He has money. Not unless you go to your knees and pray every day with your family. And after they have left your home, you need to pray for your family that wherever they are, the Lord will shield them that their marriages will stand. When you're looking at the perfect will of God, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 29 verses 11. Jeremiah 29, 11. The Bible says, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. When the Lord created you, when the Lord formed you in your mother's womb, he knew you. He knew what you were meant to be. And so the Lord makes sure that he talks to you from time to time. And this is through prayer. When you talk to God, there is that quiet time that you spend alone in that room listening to God. What is the Lord telling me about this issue? If you are trusting God for a spouse, you pray unto God. Sometimes you fast and you tell him, Father, I need a husband. Father, I need a wife. And the Lord speaks to you and tells you, my daughter, wait. Wait. The reason could be that maybe your husband is not yet ready. Maybe he's still studying. Or even your husband has not given his life to Christ. And if you wait, you will realize that when you get together with this man, you will say for sure, this is the man that the Lord planned for me. Because you'll be able to see that things are falling into place. The way you work together, the way you talk, you were meant to be together. But when you fall out of the perfect will of God, that is when you follow somebody because of money. You follow somebody because of looks. But the Bible says that looks are deceptive. So a family is able to reflect the presence of God in their lives if they are able to pray together, if they are able to remain true to one another. It is very important that if you are going somewhere, let your spouse know, let your wife know that tomorrow I'm going to industrial area and I'll be there from this time to this time. Then by around 2 p.m. I will be back so you can prepare something for me. If your wife is going somewhere, she should tell you, I'm going to visit Juliet. Because there is a baby shower. And from there I'll go to my mom's place and come back in the evening. It is good for us to be accountable to one another. Especially because of what is going on. You could be expecting somebody at home. And maybe somebody would have been involved in a blast. It is good for us to let each other know that I'm going here. I'm going there. The second characteristic is. It is where Jesus Christ is the Lord. It is where Jesus Christ is the Lord. It is where Jesus Christ is the Lord. Being served and worshipped in spirit and truth. You can write John 4.23. It, it is where Jesus Christ is the Lord. Being, being served and worshipped in spirit and truth. John 4.23. And you can also write Psalms 1.27 verses 1. The Bible says in John 4.23. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For such the Father seeks to worship him. Praise the Lord. We need to understand that the man is the priest in a home. The Lord looks upon the man to lead the family on the spiritual things. Which means that a man should make sure that he is loaded with the word. The husband should make sure that he is addicted to prayer. So that he can lead the family straight. You can imagine that if you have a pilot who doesn't understand geography. If you can have the captain. You can imagine if you, if you have the captain who can't study the geocodes. The geomaps. It means you are doomed. And so the husband is the one who tells the wife, please wake up, let us pray together. When Brother Vincent comes to you and says, my wife, wake up, we pray together. You are supposed to thank the Lord for that. Because you have a man whose antenna is up. 
And when there is a danger coming along the way, he will tell you, my wife, I sense there is a problem coming. Let us go to our knees. Praise the Lord. And in the evening, you involve your children. And they will know that it is our tradition in this house to be a prayerful family. Because through prayer, you will know how to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. For you to worship the Lord, you have to be interconnected with the Lord spiritually. Because it is through the spirit that the Lord reveals what is yet to come. You remember we read 1 Corinthians 2, 9. No eye has seen, no ear has heard what the Lord has in store for us. My brother, my sister, do you know what the Lord has in store for your family? You can only know when you get connected with the Lord spiritually. And that is through worship. There are times you can even be sitting with your wife in the sitting room and you mute the television and you start worshiping the Lord together. I've done so with my wife. And when we do that, the children get in and we worship for close to an hour. Sometimes as a family, we pray for one hour. Praise the Lord. Even when it is prayer day and no one has come, we engage into prayers until my son, as young as he is, when you say praise the Lord, he knows how to say amen. There are some songs he now knows. How did it come about? Because we engaged the Lord. So if a visitor comes in and hears that, he will be able to say, for this child who have known this song, it means this is a tradition in this house. You don't get into that lifestyle for you to brag before people. But you get into it to shield your family from the attack of the enemy. Because right from the Garden of Eden, the enemy has been against the institution of marriage. He tries to make sure every day to try and get your husband to love another woman at his place of work. He tries to get your wife to admire another man across the road. That is the order of the day. It will be like that until the end. But what enables your husband to stand? Praise the Lord. It is the prayer of a righteous woman. It is the prayer of a mother. What will enable a wife to stand? It is the prayer of a husband. Lazima tuchafue magoti. So that our marriages can stand. Buenas if you Apart from eating together, I want you to ask yourself this question. Those of us that are married, do you ever pray with your wife? Do you ever pray with your husband? That's the most powerful thing that can ever happen in your marriage. Just taking even 15 minutes, your husband is seated here, your wife is seated here, and you say, let us pray for this issue. Let us pray for our child. That's one of the most powerful things that can ever happen in your marriage. Because when that happens, the rest will follow. If it is cars, they will come. If it is projects, they will come. Why? Because a family that prays together stays together. And you've shown the Lord that you are following Matthew 6, 33. That is Seek ye first the kingdom of the Lord and his righteousness, and the rest shall be added. How do you seek the Lord? Through prayer. What does if you will? Let your neighbors know whenever you are not around. They should say, Kwanu kijana Alex akoapi. Hatu just kile kile ni tunas kianga ukumasa tisa ya usi. You will not have to broadcast yourself around your neighborhood that you are a born again child of God. They will tell by your worship. The book of Psalms 127 says that unless the Lord builds a house, those who build it labor in vain. Not unless you start with the Lord in your marriage, you are heading for a crash. You need to allow yourself to become a fool. The thing that have never made sense to you. Things like fasting, things like praying with your family. You just do them because obedience is better than sacrifice. Sometimes even if you don't understand it, just do it. Praise the Lord. And in the end, you will say, I am glad that I obeyed. Because through obedience, we are able to harvest a lot of blessings. Through obedience, we are able to harvest unity in marriage. Through obedience, we are able to make your love life to be alive. You look at some marriages, if people were married like 15 or 20 years ago, they now operate like brother and wife. They, they, they don't even crack jokes. Your marriage should be lively. As long as you live with your wife and your husband, sometimes you crack a joke with your wife. Sometimes you remind each other those days. Praise the Lord. When you are courting, when she was still slim, didn't have a child, remind her of those days and tell her, I really appreciate you. Eh? Praise the Lord. But if you don't pray, the Lord may not even lead you towards that direction. And before long, your wife will become like a sister to you. You can't even crack some jokes. The third point is that it is where the husband is loving. The third point is that it is where the husband is loving, kind, compassionate, and faithful to the wife. 
It is where the husband is loving, kind, compassionate, and faithful to the wife. Who wants a loving husband, ladies? Who wants a loving husband? So compassionate. Praise the Lord. I understand that is the desire. Let's read 1 Peter 3, 7 and see what the Bible says. A loving and compassionate husband. And this also goes to the men. 1 Peter, it is just after the book of James. Chapter 3, verse 7. The Bible says, Likewise, you husbands, live considerately with your wives, bestowing honor on the woman as the weaker sex, since you are joint heirs of the grace of life, in order that your prayers may not be hindered. We've seen that one of, the, one of the characteristics of a godly and a healthy home is that it is where a, a husband is loving, kind, compassionate, and faithful. We need to understand that when you read the book of Galatians 5.22, it speaks of the fruits of the Holy Spirit. And we see there is kindness in it. We see there is love in it. How do these fruits come about? The fruits come from inward. That is why we encourage people receive the Holy Ghost by the evidence of speaking in tongues so that these things can come out of you the way fruits come out of trees. Praise the Lord. And so, when you find a man who fears the Lord, the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. By fearing the Lord, it means that this person has given his life to Christ. When you meet a man who really fears the Lord, not a man that you met and then you made him to fear the Lord. No, no, no. That man may pretend. And once you get married, he may remove a bottle of Tasca and say, Sasa, ni mekupata. You cannot go anywhere. Meet a man who is in motion in the things of God and say, wonderful brother, this is a man who struggles day and night to make sure that he pleases the Lord and whatever he does to you will be simply a product of his salvation or rather the fear of the Lord. The Bible tells us from what you have read 1 Peter 3 7 that if a man treats a woman badly his prayers are hindered. Maombi yako haitajibiwa ukitunza muke wako vibaya. Muke wako anapo itaji chakula you are supposed to provide. When your woman needs a dress you are supposed to provide. When your woman needs something at least for the pocket, you need to provide. Praise the Lord. And if you box her at night, kick her, your prayers will be hindered. One has a few way. Because a true man should never beat his wife. In fact, when you beat your wife, you harden her. The best way is go to your knees and the Lord will break her. The Lord will break her and she will say for sure, the man that my husband serves is a true God. Praise the Lord. And so the husband should always make sure that he provides for his family. Understanding very well that the woman is a weaker vessel. I'm sure those of us that have been married for quite some time, you have gone through this. When you get home, your wife is loaded with stories. Whether she's at work or on leave. By the time she's serving you tea before supper, she has told you ten stories. You know this lady, Hata Haumjui, praise the Lord. But she's assuming you are there. Eh? Na, na ongea, na ongea, na ongea, na ongea. If you've not learned <laughs> to be a good listener, you may be at loggerheads with your wife. So you learn. That is kind of a weakness stroke strength. And even when you are going to sleep, they still have stories until you say, now may the day break. I've gone through that. Some of her colleagues, I, as in I knew them before I even met them. And some of them, I have never even seen them. But I have their bio data. So what do I do? I simply listen. Brother Vincent, you need to listen to her. Because if you don't listen to her, another man will listen to her. All that they want is simply attention. And sometimes you want to read something. You are busy, but they don't even notice that you are trying to read. If she didn't go to work, there is something she saw around. Have you noticed that neighbor? Now it is, uh -uh. you have to listen. So don't shut her up. Let her talk. And when you want to excuse her, say, honey, excuse me. Praise the Lord. And you can go and attend to your needs and then come back. Another thing is, brothers, we need to compliment our wives. When she has made her hair very well, tell her your hair looks good. When she has worn that new dress that you bought her, tell her, wow, you look wonderful. Because they feed on praises. They feed on praises. When attack a Sifa, Brother Vincent, you tell them, wow, you still look wonderful. Kwanza yenyele ukiweka hivi na hivi, ndiyo utaka vizuri. Anaona kumbe huo unafuata. Praise the Lord. Lakini ukimudanganya bado atajua. Atasema tu, umeniambia tu kwa sababu, you want to brush me off. 
because they can sense bwana asifiwe so we need to love our wives extend compassion to them compassion is the kind of love whereby you really really love that person regardless of how things are yes she is weak akona hii weakness ama ile but what do you do you still extend your love to her another another thing is that you need to learn how to forgive women are very good at keeping records they can remember this thing you did 2012 july 15th at 8 pm you did abcd as much as they tell you that i have forgiven you they still keep a record bwana asifiwe ladies we need to learn how to forgive men we need to learn how to forgive and you can only learn that through the word of god praise the lord the fourth one is where the wife is devoted loving where the wife is devoted loving faithful and submissive to her husband where the wife is devoted loving faithful and submissive to her husband we shall read the same first peter chapter 3 verses 1 to 6 and uh, proverbs 15:1 and proverbs 14:1 First Peter 3, 1 Peter 3:1-6 Proverbs 15:1 Proverbs 14:1 The Bible says in 1 Peter 3:1-6 Likewise you wives be submissive to your husbands so that some though they do not obey the word may be won without a word by the behavior of their wives when they see you are reverent and chaste behavior Praise the Lord That is verse 1 Here Peter is addressing a woman who is born again a woman who has the fear of God in her the kind of woman that you see every Sunday morning going to church prayerful choir member a child of God who serves the Lord but in this case this woman got married to a man who is not born again or maybe initially both of them were not born again but the wife became born again first before the husband and so the husband is still in the ways of the world drinking smoking and enjoying the pleasure of this world and so peter is saying instead of talking too much condemning him telling him of how he is bad he is not responsible he should be like the wife the husband of so and so you should be on your knees praying because through your character through your godly behavior he will be attracted to salvation i remember my pastor in india told me of a story as in a story of a woman who was having a husband that was not born again and so this woman would be beaten by the husband from time to time she would be beaten bruised and every night she would continue praying at night she would continue with her prayer life with her god life and in her prayer she would to, she used to mention her husband and say god i thank you for my husband i appreciate you for what you're doing So one night the husband was going to ease himself and he passed by the sitting room and heard the prayers that the wife was making he started shedding tears he cried and went to the wife and hugged her he told her from today henceforth i've decided to change my ways i didn't know that you could love me this much i beat you i don't give you enough money i don't give you the attention that you need but yet you still extend your love compassionate love so when we get married sometimes things happen there are those who were not born again initially but then the man becomes born again or the wife becomes born again you are encouraged to continue with your christianity although it's tough but you are encouraged to continue extending your love so that through your christian behavior you will be like a city set on a hill that cannot be hid that is matthew 5:13 to 16 verses 2 says verse 3 Let not you as be the outward adorning with braiding of hair, decoration of gold, and wearing of the fine clothing, but let it be the hidden person of the heart, with the imperishable jewel of a gentle and quiet spirit which is which in God's sight is very precious. So once the holy the holy women who hoped in God used to adorn themselves and were submissive to their husbands, as Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord, and you are now her children if you do right and let nothing terrify you praise the lord many of us are into the outward adorning ukikutana na msichana kwa barabara unasema wow life is so sweet for this woman amejipodoka kutoka hapa mpaka hapa mdomo red 
purple, brown earrings ni mpaka hapa. But when you follow that woman at night, she's crying. Praise the Lord. She spends so much time on things that don't, don't really add value to her beauty. Praise the Lord. According to the worldly standards, they add value. But according to the scriptures, they don't really add value. Praise the Lord. They make you to waste so much time on them when you're supposed to put a lot of focus on your marriage. Because marriage is like a shamba. You plow this year, you'll plow it next year, and even the other year. And in some places, they, they normally plow the shamba twice. They harvest in August, and in September, they are on it again. The same, same way in marriage, it is an area or a shamba whereby you have to plow day and night. There is no time for resting. Have you ever seen a farmer and buy a mejaza ukuvitu? Never. Look at it from that angle. I, sometimes I hang around ladies and I see how much time they waste concentrating on fashion. Wearing a nice dress is not bad. But when you put it as your first priority, it becomes a problem. Because we see a number of women dressing so well. But in their homes, it is ugali and skuma from January to December. Children don't have clothes. But the woman, you go on top. Every lunchtime, chicken, chips, soda. They are there in our offices. We see them. The priorities are wrong. And so, we are encouraged that the wife should be devoted, loving, faithful, and submissive to her husband. Submission is not subordination, but a wholehearted response to your husband's love. Let us read Proverbs 15.1. Proverbs 15.1. It's after the book of Psalms, so don't wander away to the book of Genesis. Proverbs 15.1. The Bible says, Proverbs 15.1. I'll read 14.1 first. They are still on the same page. Wisdom builds her house, but folly with her own hands tears it down. My sister, please read for me from your version quickly. Yours brings it, brings it out better. Proverbs 14.1. Loudly. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish pulls it down with her hands. King James is better. Proverbs 14.1 says, Every wise woman... Buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her own hands. Praise and find that a responsible woman will be able to build her own house. When we read the book of Proverbs 31:10, going down, it talks of a hard-working woman, a helper who tells the husband, "We we should now invest at this place. We should now go this direction." But a woman who is foolish will bring down with her own hands and at times even with her, with her own words. I want to ask a question. Is a rude woman submissive? Is a rude woman submissive? The kind of women that when you are saying something, wako ready na jibu. You say one sentence, they answer you in 300 words. You tell them, we need to take this direction. Who? Me. I can't. You are telling me to do ABCD. I can't. How? What will my friends say? Praise the Lord. That kind of woman is not submissive. That is why the wise man said in, in chapter 15 verses 1 that a soft answer turns away wrath, but a, but a harsh word stirs up anger. To be honest with you women, a man or a husband doesn't like it when you try to engage him rudely in a conversation. When you answer back of your of your, I'll tell you the truth. It stirs up anger in a man. Praise the Lord. If you sit with wise elderly women, they will tell you, let the man come home. Let him parrot around. You keep quiet. Meet him later. Then you can talk to him who say, my husband, what was wrong? That soft answer later will actually turn the wrath away. But a king here because he had a terrible day. Now we unainuka. That home will be chaotic. Praise the Lord. Women have been given the grace to absorb. Men have not been given that grace to absorb. There are times we try. But men cannot really take in when you try to talk to them rudely. You need to respect your husband as the Bible says. Respect your husband and treat him with respect. You need to be also faithful to your husband. You should not have... Mipango ya kando. Whereby your husband is there. Maybe he doesn't have a job. 
We live in a world whereby today your husband has a job, tomorrow he doesn't have. Or maybe your husband cannot give birth. You are okay, but your husband is, is not okay. You are not encouraged by the Bible to go out and seek for a side dish. Praise the Lord. You need to stay in that relationship because you chose your husband. You chose your wife. So as you make your bed, so must you lie in it. But you lie in it in prayer. The fifth point is that a characteristic of a godly and a healthy home is that it is where children are brought up in the fear. It is where the children are brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. They are brought up in the fear and admonition of the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. And we shall also read Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Ephesians chapter 6 verses 1 to 4. And Deuteronomy 6, 4 to 9. Ephesians 6, 1 to 4 says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with the promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Slaves, be obedient to those who are your earthly masters with fear and trembling in singleness of heart, as of Christ, not in the ways of eye service, as men pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. Praise the Lord. The children are encouraged to obey their parents. But the, but the question is this. What if you are asking a child to obey you, but you are not walking in the fear of the Lord? One of the reasons that even made me to be born again, I was asking myself now that I have a child, I have a son, what kind of example am I going to give him? In my computer, I used to have worldly music. There was Tupac, there was Snoop Doggy Dog, there was Westlife, there was Lingala, everything was there. A lot of space was covered with worldly music. And then I asked myself, where will I be listening to this music? If it is in the house, my son will be there. And children are very good observers. Whatever they see, they apply it the next minute. Praise the Lord. And they, if they see you watch the dirty music on the screen, when you are not around, you will see your little girl or your little boy dancing the same, same way. And by bad luck, if your visitors are there, what will you do? When, you are, when maybe one of the visitors has got a teenager son and a ringtone comes in, along. How will you feel? People will say, ah, ah, fulani anajua mengi. That is a big head on small shoulders. The way you talk matters. The way you dress matters a lot. Praise the Lord. You need to dress in a decent manner so that even when your son grows up, he knows the kind of wives to bring home. When your daughter grows up, he knows the kind of husbands to bring home. If you're not a drunkard, you tell your daughter, this is not the way to go. And you teach her the ways of the Lord. Because the Bible instructs us in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 6, verses 4 to 9. It is the fifth book of the Old Testament. The Bible says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be upon your heart and you shall teach them diligently to your children and you shall talk of them when you sit in the house and when you walk in the way and when you lie down and when you arise. Praise the Lord. Why do you think Muslims normally teach their children madras right from 6 a.m. and in the evening? It is because they are trying to be diligent in the traditions and the ways of their Lord. The same same way when you wake up in the morning, you need to remind your children that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the way they ought to walk. And when your daughter watches how you walk, she will try and bring home almost the same kind of a man. Praise the Lord. And if you are a drunkard coming home at 3 a.m., that is the kind of a husband that your daughter will bring home because she is learning from you. If you normally beat your wife, then your son will do the same. When, when his wife angers him, he will say, Hmm, Leona Dadia Kichukwa Kiboko, na you ilifanya kazi. Rua! Rua! Praise the Lord. You should never touch your wife. You should never slap your husband. Praise the Lord. Nowadays, it is what is happening on TV. There are women who are battering their husbands. Some even lose their manhood. Because walimuagiliwa majimoto. 
the ways of the devil. And when you're doing all that, your child is watching. Whatever they watch is what they will do. If they see you, Brother Benson, kneeling every day and praying, when your son grows up, when your daughter grows up, they will do the same. If they see you bringing home crates of tasker, they will do the same. We have people, the husband comes home at 12 a.m., the wife comes at 3, the son and the daughter come home at 6 a.m. They have money, but the husband comes home at 12 a.m., wife and I 3 a.m., the daughter and the son come home 6 a.m., all of them copying what daddy and mommy did. My dear bottle. Praise the Lord. If you take changa, she will take changa. If you take wine and say, no, wine is not bad, they will even go to Amarula. Somebody was telling me, but Amarula is just milk. I say it's sour, sour. You try and go that route and see where it will take you. Because one thing I've learned about life is that Pombe does not come along. Pombe comes as a package. It comes with women. It comes with extra marital affairs. Praise the Lord. It comes with violence. It comes with vulgar words. And little by little, you plant in one bottle in your life. You plant in the second one. The next thing, you'll be having a breweries in, in your life. Some young people were telling me before they started drinking. They usually stole their father's whiskey from the cabinet. They stole their father's wine from the cabinet. So we need to reflect on our lives. How are we bringing up our children? Because when somebody looks at your children, they are able to tell the kind of lifestyle that, that you are living. If your child is the kind of a child that says thank you after you have given him something, when people see that, they see that there is order in, that, in this home. When other people see that when food is brought on the table, the children say, Hatujaomba. My daughter, when you give her something, even if it is a biscuit, she will take it back to you and say, Omba. We didn't tell her that she should be doing so. But she sees before we eat, we pray. Proverbs 22, 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Personally, I was brought up in a home whereby church was the order of the day. Whether you are sick, whether you are what, you are supposed to go to church. And it got into my veins. It got into my system to a point I became a pastor. I wasn't forced, but I came to understand I tried to move away from church for some time. But every time I got a problem, I used to remember what did my mom used to do when she got into a problem? Prayer. Prayer. Prayer was the order of the day. Every 3 a.m. she prays. Every 3 a.m. she prays. And I said, if she did this and she prospered, I think I ought to do this. So maisha mbao naishi kila siku, our children are watching us every day. Every day. And they may not copy you. They may not do that particular thing before your presence. You will come to realize later when things are bad that your child is, is a smoker. Why? Alijifunzia kwa baba. Your child is a drunkard. Learned from home. Lastly, the last point is that it is where the couple is united in love. It is where a couple is united in love and is ready to make the home a heaven. It is where the couple is united in love and is ready to make the home a heaven of peace on earth. First Peter chapter 3 verses 8 to 11. That's our last point. And then Isaiah 59 verses 1 to 2. First Peter 3 8 to 11 and Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. The Bible says in 1 Peter 3, 8 to 11, Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love of the brethren, a tender heart, and a, and a humble mind. Finally, all of you have unity of spirit, sympathy, love of the brethren, a tender heart, and a humble mind. Do not return evil for evil, or reviling for reviling, but on the contrary, bless for to this you have been called, that you may obtain a blessing. For he that would love life and see good days, he that would love life and see good days, let him keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking guile. Let him turn away from evil and do right. Let him seek peace and pursue it. Praise the Lord. In marriage, many a times you will rub shoulders with your husband or with your wife. Sometimes you will disagree on some issues. 
I gave you a very good example last Sunday. You agree with your wife that this child of ours will not be watching TV from Mondays to Fridays. He or she will only be watching on Saturdays in the afternoon after he has finished studying. But you realize after the husband has gone to work, it becomes a field day for the children. They jump from one chair to the other because the mother is meek. The mother cannot say a thing. But you agree with your husband, this is how we will move this family. And when the husband comes home without notifying the wife that I am on the way, the husband finds the house in a mess. And he becomes mad. Praise the Lord. You find that that home will be the kind of a place that the husband will all desire to be coming home frequently. You find some husbands saying in town until late, until 9, 10, 11, yet they finished up their work by 5. It is simply because that home, peace does not exist. Praise the Lord. And also, when we rub shoulders with each other, when we get into disagreements, we are encouraged to seek peace. The Bible also says, seek peace with all men. And even for our prayers to be answered, we need to forgive each other. When your husband wrongs you, you need to forgive him. Praise the Lord. So that when he comes home, he will be glad knowing that he will find a wife smiling at him and offering him a cup of tea. Not a wife who opens the door. Even before seeing who is at the door, and the husband is there busy with shopping. Mzigo ni mzito, but the wife has already walked away because there is no peace. What are the children seeing? What are they observing in that home? Is it a home that they can laugh, they can enjoy, they can smile and even crack jokes? Definitely no. So at times things can be so tough in our marriages until you ask God, even this one should I forgive? I just found him red-handed in a restaurant with that girl. Should I really forgive this one? God give me time. <laughs> Cindy. <laughs> In fact, I found an SMS saying that they are to meet in a particular restaurant. And when I asked him, he denied. What hurt me the most is that he denied even after we hear these discussions in the office. And ladies talk and talk. Unfortunately, we have wrong advisors. They tell you, sit here. I tell you. for the next five days. Those are the advisors. But what we need to do is to forgive one another. It is not easy to forgive. All that you have to do is ask God for the grace to forgive your spouse for what he or she may have committed. However big it may be, trust in the Lord. Because when your home becomes a godly home, you will see it in your children. The way they will carry out themselves, it will be in a manner that suggests this home is an orderly home. They are storms, but that home knows how to calm the storms. They bring in the aspect of prayer. They bring in the aspect of reading the Bible together. That is why I told you, if you are able to pray with your wife, you have conquered. That time that you are not getting along, you will be asking yourself, I feel, is it okay for me to continue this way? I think I should be praying with my wife. Then you will go to your wife and tell your wife, I think we need to make peace. I feel we need to make peace so that we can be able to pray together and our prayers can be answered. If we don't do this, our prayers will be hindered. Praise the Lord. I believe that up to there, we have gotten something about a healthy and a godly home. Next Sunday, we shall be finishing up on that topic, looking at the enemies of a godly home. What are the barriers? What are the things that get into a good home and bring a home down? A home that was once known as to be the best home, the best couple in town, the happy couple. But now, they are actually applying for a divorce. We shall be looking at that next week. I want us to be on our feet and just make a prayer before we finish. I want us to be on our feet. You know your life. If you're married, you know how your marriage looks like. The Lord has spoken. You know where you fall. And I want you to make a prayer over your marriage. If you are failing as a woman in submission, ask the Lord to give you the grace to submit. If you're a man and you are failing in loving your wife, Ask the Lord to give you the grace to love your wife, to speak to her nicely, to compliment. If both of you as parents are failing in giving your children a good example, ask the Lord to give you the grace so that you can come to him if you, if you have not given your life unto Christ and the Lord will give you the grace to stand. Praise the Lord. And if you're still single, you now understand the repercussions of going after a man that is not born again 
or a woman that is not born again, you are just in the pipeline of a disaster. That is a disaster in the making. Go before the Lord and just pray. Pray for yourself. If you have a daughter, pray for your daughter. That daughter that is not married, pray that God will give her a good husband in the future. If you have a son, pray for your son that God will give your husband that time. Will give your son a wife that is God-fearing and they will walk in the ways of the Lord. Open your mouth. I'm sure you have something to say over your life, over your children. And even if you have a brother that the marriage is not doing well, speak something over their marriage. Because we serve a God who changes not, but can change situations, can change circumstances. There is nothing too hard for the Lord. If your husband has got too much appetite for beer, too much appetite for liquor, ask the Lord to remove the appetite. If your husband is weak when it comes to women, too weak, ask the Lord to strengthen him. If your wife has got issues, ask the Lord to help her. Praise the Lord. Because when marriages stand, the church will be able to stand. Our society will, will be able to stand. Speak to the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, God, for ministering unto us. Thank you, my master, for the couples that you've been able to bring to this house. I appreciate you for the married ladies, for the married men. How I pray that, God, you make our marriages to stand in the name of Jesus. Where we are failing, Father, I pray that, God, you strengthen us. Father, I pray that, God, you turn our weaknesses to become our strength. In the name of Jesus. I pray that God no marriage shall fail in the name of Jesus. Divorce shall not be our portion in the name of Jesus. I pray then for our children, Heavenly Master, that in future you will help them, O oh God, to have good husbands and good wives in the name of Jesus. You will prevent them from falling into wrong relationships in the name of Jesus. I commit even those that are still single, that God give them the grace to wait for the right partner in the name of Jesus. Prepare somebody for them. Prepare a good husband for them. Prepare a good wife for them in the name of Jesus. I pray that God, you will give us the grace of God to apply wisdom when it comes to such matters of marriage. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Your presence is overwhelming. nothing like your presence. See? 